Why, hello there. Today we will be talking about simplifying radicals. Now this is a very fundamental skill that we will be referring to basically any other time we work with radicals. Specifically, we will be looking at the factor tree method for simplification, which I find to be the least confusing of the different methods for accomplishing our goal. So, without further ado, let's get going. Now, to simplify a radical, what we actually are trying to do is take the radicand, that is, the number inside the radical, and turn it into something smaller. To do this, we will break it down into its fundamental, or prime, parts. Let's take a look at the square root of 75. Now, the two easiest numbers that multiply to 75 are 3 and 25. I'm going to underline my 3 because that is a prime number. 25 can be broken down a little further into 5 times 5, both of which are prime, and therefore we are done with our factor tree. Now we must rewrite our radical, and we will do so by taking 75 and writing it as the product of its prime factors, so the square root of 5 times 5 times 3. When we use the factor tree method, we are going to be looking for pairs of numbers like these 5s here, because we are taking the square root. Now when you take the square root of a number times itself, you get just the number out of it. So what we will do is we will write one representative number from the pair on the outside, and then cross off the numbers on the inside, because we have, in effect, taken the square root. And with that done, the only thing left under the radical is the 3. So our answer is 5 radical 3. Not too bad. Let's try the next one. To simplify the square root of 120, let's think of two numbers that multiply to 120. How about 12 and 10? That's easy, right? 12 breaks down into 3 times 4. Remember, 3 is a prime. 10 breaks down into 5 times 2. Both of those are prime as well. 4 can be broken down a little bit more into 2 times 2. Again, both of which are prime, so we are done with our factor tree. Now let's rewrite the radical. This time we're going to do 5 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. Notice how I did this in descending order. You don't have to, I just like to do that. We do have a single pair of 2, so we are going to put one representative from that pair outside of the radical to get 2. And then on the inside, we are left with 5 times 3 times 2. But we don't very much care to leave it like that, so we may as well just write it as 2 times the square root of 30. And this, my friends, is our final answer. Not too shabby. Now this last example is a little bit of an anomaly. We have the square root of 210. This breaks down into 21 times 10. 21 breaks down into 7 times 3. Those are both prime. 10 breaks down into 5 times 2. Those are also both prime. I wonder if you can see where this is going. We will rewrite this as the square root of 7 times 5 times 3 times 2. And then we go to look for our pairs and... Oh my goodness. Not a single pair. I guess that means that what we started with was actually as simple as it gets. The square root of 210 is the simplest form of this radical. Let's take a look and see what happens when we have some radicals that produce multiple doubles. We'll start our proceedings with the square root of 48 over here. 48 breaks down into 12 times 4. And 12 can be broken down further into 3 times 4, 3 being prime. 4 breaks down into 2 times 2, both of those being prime. And guess what? We're going to have the same situation here with another 2 times 2. Again, both prime, we are done with our factor tree. Rewriting, we will get the square root of 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Right, and so we have one pair of 2s right over here. We're going to put one representative outside. We got another pair of 2s right there. We put another one outside. So the question is, how do those interact? Well, it works the same way. We have the 2 from the first pair, cross those out, and then we're going to multiply times the 2 from the other pair. 3 is the only thing left over in the radical, so now all we have to do is do 2 times 2. And our final answer will be 4 times the square root of 3. Our final example for today will be the square root of 540. 540 breaks down into 54 times 10. That's probably the easiest pair right there. 54 is the same as 9 times 6, still not prime yet, but 10 is with 5 times 2. There we go. 
9 breaks down into 3 times 3, double prime. 6 breaks down into 3 times 2. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. We're going to have the square root of 5 times 3 3. So 3 times 3 times 3. And then 2 2's. 2 times 2. We have ourselves a pair of 3's right here. We're going to put one outside. And we have ourselves a pair of 2's. We're going to put one of them outside as well. And just like before, we're going to write the representative from our 3's, cross them out, and multiply them times the representative from our 2's. We cross those out. We still have more than one number left in the radical. That's going to give us 5 times 3. If we do all of our multiplication here, we're going to get 6 times the square root of 15. Notice how I did not multiply the 3 times 2 times 5 times 3 again. I just did outside with outside, inside with inside, and there's our answer. And that, as they say, is that. Break down your radicand into its prime factorization by using a factor tree. Circle any pairs of numbers and write one representative outside of the radical and cross off the pair on the inside. Then you multiply the stuff on the outside with the stuff on the outside and the stuff on the inside with the other stuff on the inside. This will, every time, give you the most simplified radical. I wish you good luck, and I will see you next time.